and welcome to another up close video. So today's one is for Tonics Stamp Club number four, which is called Shoot for the Moon. Um, I know this is launching just after Christmas, so I hope you had a really uh, happy and merry Christmas as well. Um, but this month's uh, stamp set with coordinating die set has a gorgeous like celestial moon, stars, um, silhouette sort of landscape kind of feel to it. And the die set as well, in the past months we've had um, like just dies that just coordinate with the stamps or we've had a mixture of dies that coordinate with the stamps but also dies that work on their own as well and that's what we've got again this month which is really nice. So you've got um, like one, two and then three that properly coordinate I think and then all the rest are just extra dies so it's really nice to be able to um, buy this set and not only is it just sort of cards that you can stamp with you can just make a card just with the die cuts as well um, and I filmed a sped up video uh, called like Glimmer Paste Galaxy um, backgrounds with this uh, die set and stamp set but I've already sent those cards off so I haven't got them with me but there'll be a separate clip that I put into this later and those cards are kind of more uh, die focused so I, I've actually done a few more samples to show you as well um, one, no two of them actually are just stamp focused just to give you a few more ideas with the stamps and then I've also done a journal page as well because I think um, the, some of the sentiments in this month's set, like uh, you are my moon, my stars, my everything, is kind of a nice uh, quote to go on a journal page as well. And you can obviously um, mix in some of these sentiments that are in here and add uh, like alphabet dies or stickers or stamps and create um, a really nice kind of quote or a positive kind of... Uh, message to go on an art journal page as well. So uh, let's have a look at the stamp set and it, uh, like I just said this is called Shoot for the Moon so it's very sort of moon kind of oriented um, but you've got some really stunning images in here that I think can go for really like masculine kind of cards but obviously you can also give um, a feminine feel maybe doing like more of a um, a pinky purpley galaxy kind of sky or going for more of a bluey greeny orangey sort of sky um, as well you can really mix up the colours that you use so basically any colour scheme would work with these stamps which is brilliant um, this one is like the sort of texture that's on the moon but even though it is the moon uh, I think you could use this as an earth as well. I know it's obviously it's not got the continents and stuff on it, but I think um, just giving like a hint of um, an earth or a planet, I think this would still work for that kind of a card as well. So even though it is a moon, I think it'll work for other things. Um, then you also get a crescent moon, um, which you can like just keep plain, or you could stamp part of this onto the crescent moon to give it that kind of moony texture as well if you wanted to. You've got this one here, which um, I think it's supposed to be kind of like distant stars, um, but it could also be snow, or um, I, you probably guessed that I love splattering on my cards, whether it's with um, an ink or a glitter marker or an aqua flow or um, a watercolour, any kind of thing I like to splatter onto my cards. Um, this gives the look of splatter, but without having to actually load up a paintbrush and try and get it to splatter properly. So if you're a fan of that look, but you're not very good at achieving it with a paintbrush, um, I think this stamp is going to be brilliant for just adding that extra bit of splatter. Um, and it works really nicely with the glitter markers, so you can get a sparkly splatter as well. I've done that on my art journal page. Then uh, you also get this stamp, which is a gorgeous uh, little selection of four trees um, that are in kind of a silhouette form. So any sort of bright or galaxy kind of background that you might have created with inks or Nouveau product, uh, you could then stamp this in front either just with black ink or with um, heat embossing as well um, and give a really nice stark contrast between a background and then the foreground. Um, and you can repeat this a few times as well, it looks really lovely just across the bottom of a card. You've also got a lovely branch here too, which I think if you stamped it up this way could kind of um, emulate lightning, so you could have a lightning strike uh, with the moon and, and the trees and stuff as well. I think that would look really good. 
Then you've also got a cluster of stars, which is really lovely. I like the fact that you've got a mixture of different sizes in there, and it's a really nice random um, layout of them. So if you stamp this like three or four times, it doesn't look like you've stamped the same stamp multiple times. It looks like um, you might have like stamped them all individually, which is really nice. And then finally, for the images, you get um, a full landscape along the bottom of like mountains and stuff. I haven't actually used this one. Um, I think I've used almost almost everything else, but I haven't actually used the mountains. Uh, but I like the way you've got that um, shadow effect on them. So again, it kind of gives it more in a silhouette form. And you also get the coordinating die to go with that, which I'll show you in a minute as well. So you can have your bright inky background, maybe with the trees stamped on it, some stars and stuff. And then you could cut the mountains out and have them in the foreground. So you still get like the white snow capped mountains with the dark shadows and stuff. Um, so lots of different options there really. Then uh, you've got a few different sort of sentiments. Some of them kind of work with each other. So you've got shoot for the moon, which could just be shoot for the moon. Um, but then you've also got even if you miss your land among the stars, which is really nice. So you can do a sort of two part sentiment on your card. You've also got another trip around the moon. You've got stay wild, um, happy birthday. Moon Child, which I actually combined those two together. Um, this one I've used in my art journal page. It says, you are my moon, my stars, my everything. And then you've also got, I'm over the moon for you as well. So um, nice little punny sentiment uh, slotted in there as well. So those are all of the stamps that are in this month's stamp club. And then you also get the dies to go with it as well. So I'll show you the coordinating dies. So you get a circle die, which is just great for any kind of cards that you make, actually, because this is like a small size of card that I make a lot, and that's quite a nice um, aperture size for a card of a small kind of A2, A6 kind of size card. So that could just be useful um, all the time, not just to go with this stamp set. But it will actually cut out the stamped moon, but it's actually gonna cut out slightly smaller than the stamped image, so you shouldn't get a white border around the edge, which is nice. You're actually gonna have edge to edge um, of this like little texture. So it might even be easier to um, die cut this first and then stamp it as well. So you've got that. Plus, you also get this sort of disc inside, um, which actually can give you these crater kind of effects. So you could die cut this, stamp it with this, and then you could place this back over the top, run it through with your green squidgy embossing mat from your tangerine uh, with the die embossing sandwich, and it would uh, push the detail up through these little craters and give you some 3D texture as well as stamped texture. Or if you um, have a different machine that doesn't come with a squidgy rubber mat and you can't um, easily do the sort of embossing of a die, you can actually uh, place the die behind the, um, the aperture and you could either take your... Um, ball tool maybe uh, this one from tonic or maybe a smaller one depending what size the crater is and then you can either so you can either have the die behind the die car and then you can press through and you'll get a debossed effect or you can turn the die cut over and put the die behind it and then press through and then you'll get an embossed effect as well so you um if you if you have a light box as well that would make it much easier to do this but you can just um like rub the tool over the back of your die cut and you can just kind of feel where the little areas are going to be to create the craters in there too. So if you don't have the embossing kind of sandwich or you're too lazy to run it back through like I usually am, um, you can do it that way as well. So that is the first one that coordinates with um, one of the stamps. Then you also get the crescent moon which coordinates with this stamp. And I think it's going to cut it out exactly. Yeah, you can just about see the black line within um, the metal of this die. So you should be able to cut that out exactly. And it will give a white border around the edge of that. So you'll have the white border and then you'll have the stamped design on there too. Um, 
but you could also, if you wanted to add this texture to that crescent moon, and because you're going to cut it out and it's going to have a white border and you don't want the texture to overlap outside of the stamped lines, you can actually stamp this onto one of those full sticky post-it notes, then cut out the middle of the moon. So you want to, usually you would cut around the moon and you'd keep the moon, but you want to like stab your scissors through the middle of the moon, cut the moon out, then you could place that post-it note back over the top of your moon, then you could stamp this over the top to get the texture on it and then you could die cut it out and then you'd have a clean white border around the edge um, but again as with the first um, round moon you're also getting um, this kind of flat piece of metal that's in the crescent moon shape with the little holes in so again you can run it through in the embossing sandwich in your machine or you can um, fiddle around with using a ball tool to either deboss or emboss those kind of crater details into your moon as well so you've got multiple different options for this you could just stamp it you could stamp it and cut it out you could stamp it mask it stamp again then cut out or just have masked it and left it on the card or then you can do any of those combinations with adding the embossed detail on it as well so um really versatile they've given you like everything um you might possibly need to do whatever combination you want to so those uh those two coordinate and then the final one that actually coordinates with a stamp is this one that coordinates with that mountain border down there so you can actually cut that mountain border out but then you also get um and that sh is that going to be easy to line up yeah i think you can see yeah you can see see the stamped line there and line it up and then you will get a white border around it as well but then you can also you've got this mountain too so you can also cut this mountain out it wouldn't have the stamped detail but you could cut it out in black or um um maybe the darkest tone from kind of like a sky that you've done and have that behind and then have the moon as well so it looks like the moon is casting light onto the front mountains and not the back mountains and you've got more of a perspective in your scene as well so that's really nice to have a different um sort of a mountainscape um, but also these kind of mountains you don't have to use a stamp with it you could just have both of them cut out in silhouette as well but also um, think of your like inking techniques was it uh, stamp club number two where we got the extra grass and cloud borders these would work really nicely in conjunction with those and with those I showed you the kind of inking techniques that you can do with them so again you could cut these from some scrap card and then ink over them to give you that kind of effect if you want a one layer card as well so again lots of different options that you can do with having border dies like this and you could even use them um, in more of an abstract way as well. I mean mixing up the two different designs and just making um, a stripey design with the different wiggly borders as well would give a completely different look to a project. So you could also do that. So those are all of the dies that actually coordinate with some of the stamps. Then you also get this beautiful die which I really like. It's a whole proper row of um, trees. I'm pretty sure that doesn't line up, no. So you've got the same style of tree in the stamp as in the die, but they won't line up with each other. But you can stamp the tree in the distance and then have the die cut over the top as well. So you can actually give perspective that way, uh, which is really nice too. And depending on kind of like what width of card you're doing, if you were going to do a portrait card, you could cut this twice and have one tree line like that and then the other tree line like that and then it would look different layered in front of each other as well. And obviously you can have the mountains in the foreground or the background and the moon in the sky and stuff. So it's a really nice kind of um, scene builder die set that's coordinating with the stamp set this month so you've got that die then this one I really love as well this is the one um, in the cards of the clip that I'll insert I actually cut this as an aperture in the card and use the tree line in that as well but this die completely cuts out this beautiful crescent moon with a um, an uneven inside edge which looks really lovely but it also cuts out loads of little craters in the moon as well and because I had this die cut left I then um, decided to use it on an art journal layout and I think it looks really lovely um, and it also looks fabulous if 
you uh, put your clear mark um, embossing ink pad all over the die cut and emboss it with this Nouveau embossing powder. It's the Pearl Luster one. It's really pretty as a kind of moon kind of colour because it's sort of that off-white sort of a tone, like a warm white. And it's glittery as well. Um, so I'll show you that when I show you my... Um, art journal sample as well but I really love this one and it can still be used on a smaller card so I actually used it like I used it like this and cut the aperture out on a smaller card for one of the ones I'll show um, but you can obviously you can just have it on there as well I think this would make really nice um, like baby cards as well and even with the smaller crescent moon too because um, you can kind of have like a teddy bear sitting on the moon or um, something tied onto the moon dangling down and stuff. I always think that looks nice for kind of um, children or baby kind of cards. So you can do all sorts of things with this month's die set. And then, as well as all of those, you've also got three different little constellations of stars as well. So you've got three different ones to choose from and not only can you cut these directly into your card blank to give you different little apertures, you obviously can just use all the little fall away pieces as well and you can do uh, shaker cards with them or you can just cut them out of, um, it looks really pretty from the hollow waves cardstock, um, it kind of gives the look of the mirable star confetti that uh, Nouveau did a while ago as well um, and you can just sort of scatter them across your card then and you've got all sorts of different sizes and those really tiny ones if you got the Nouveau embellishment tool you know the sticky pick up tool um, it will be no problem picking up those tiny little stars and placing them wherever you want them as well so uh, that is all of the stamps and dies from this month's uh, shoot for the moon uh, stamp club with the coordinating die set and I'll be back in well actually I'll past me we'll be back in a second to show you um, two cards that I've done and then I'll come back and show you some more that I've done as well okay so I've got these two cards to show you quickly the uh, the kind of idea behind these was to kind of go for a sort of galaxy background but I know a lot of the time um, I've done galaxy backgrounds either using watercolours or distress inks or distress oxides or something similar like that. But I thought, why not try and do it from glimmer pastes as well? Because, um, I mean, I know glimmer pastes kind of have a limited shelf life because as you're getting down the pot they kind of tend to dry out. So I've got um, quite a few that were open, so I wanted a, a technique to kind of use a little bit of these up as well. And... Um, so I went for a kind of turquoise, purpley, pinky colour scheme and then used some black over the top. So the blue one is the Esmeralda green and then the purpley one is the Plum Spinel and the pinky one is the Raspberry Road Light. And then I also used some of the black diamond over the top and I just used the, um, the Nouveau mixed media spatulas I was using this one actually because it fits really nicely into the pot so you can actually just scoop some straight out of the pot so I was using that just to sort of spread it onto the card and I actually use black card as well um, I don't use that much black card in my crafting but I thought because I wanted it to be a kind of galaxy theme I did actually use black card to work onto so that um there wasn't any white showing through and I think it gives a really nice look and while the um, glimmer paste was still wet I sprinkled in some of the Mirable um, stars this is from the Golden Years set of confetti which was one of the first sets of confetti so it might be difficult to find these um, but they're really beautiful they've got that like um, iridescent finish on them like the Hollow Waves cardstock from Tonic as well um, but these are the, the two cards that I made that are in a video together so they're in my sped up video I don't know if there'll be two sped up videos this month I'm filming this little section early so if future me was productive there might be um, another sped up video as well I'm not 100% sure but also I hope you had a good Christmas I don't know well whether I'll remember to say that in the other part of the video as well but I know this is going out on Boxing Day I think so um, I hope you had a very Merry Christmas and anyway, back to the cards. So um, I really love this month's stamp club, but you've probably already heard me raving about it. But it's obviously stamps and they, they're doing a die set to go with it as well. And I really love um, using the combination of the two together. I think the best combinations for me for cards is to definitely have stamps and dies on there somewhere. And then 
obviously some kind of nouveau product or glittery or sparkly um, or inky um, and then usually I do like stencils as well however with this one the um, the stamp you can actually get a kind of stenciled sort of look to it as well there's this little cluster of stars in there and um, I stamped it um, did I do it on this one I think on this one I, I stamped it first with marble statue but it was a little bit too light so in the end I went in with oh over here my little metro grey ink pad and I did some first generation and some second generation stamping on there and then the little trees in the background are also first generation ink so that they stood out nicely um, and I decided to use a combination of the stamps and the die cuts for this one and I've placed them in the aperture of the moon so this is the beautiful moon, I still haven't poked all the bits out, but it cuts out so beautifully, it's really really lovely. Um, and I thought, I mean I love the actual main die cut, but I thought because that looks so pretty you might not think of using the aperture, so I thought doing a card with the aperture would be really nice to do. Um, and then I used the sentiment, shoot for the moon even if you miss your land among the stars, which I thought was a really nice sentiment. And um, to go with those mirror ball stars that I'd put in the glimmer paste, I also used the three little clusters of star dies that come in the coordinating die set just to cut out some of that hollow waves cardstock. So I've got some stars of different sizes on there as well. And then for the second card, background is exactly the same. And then for this one, instead of using the large moon aperture, I used the small crescent moon aperture um, or die to cut apertures. And then this one was a full moon, so I actually use that as kind of a focal point and you also get the die that um, embosses like little craters into this moon as well this one actually cuts the detail and embosses some of the detail too but this one you just got embossed detail you can just run that back through your die cutting machine with your um, embossing sandwich so like your green plate and your squidgy rubber mat um, or you can actually just place the die over the top of your die cut turn it over and use um, an embossing tool. This one seemed to be the best one to use, either the big or the smaller end. Um, this is from their set of three that comes with the little foam squishy mat as well. Um, but you can just poke through it and then get the detail and then I obviously enhance the detail with a little bit of colouring as well. Um, and I used the sentiment happy birthday moon child for this one and I did that sort of um, first generation, second generation kind of stamping of the stars in the background and also added on some more of those actual die cut stars um, as well. So instead of using those little star dies, which are these three, you can use these to cut straight into your card to give you um, a scattered star kind of effect or you can um, just use them to cut stars out. This is why they've given you them in like weird little configurations and stuff because it would look like a little constellation of stars um, um, on your card as well so um, I really like those so um, yeah I hope you liked those two cards and I'll pass you back to future me who shall hopefully give you some more examples I hope you enjoyed those other couple of cards from past me um, and I thought I'd show you these ones so this one is kind of really focusing on the stamps so I used um, the siren blue mini hybrid ink pad along with the metro grey um, ink pad as well and I was stamping with the stamping platform and I was inking up the top portion of these trees with the blue and then I actually inked the bottom with the grey as well and then after I'd finished stamping I also ink blended with the grey along the bottom to give like a, a misty foggy kind of look as well so they're sort of two-toned trees with the grey at the bottom to give a sort of darker effect then I also stamped the moon uh, the you know the whole full moon I stamped it first with the marble statue grey ink and I used the stamping platform so I could stamp it lots of times to build up that light grey colour then I took the little metro grey ink and I inked the very edge of the stamp and then I took some kitchen roll and just dabbed it across where you know the ink was kind of coming more into the stamp to give it more of a feathered edge and then I stamped it again so it's kind of given more of a 3D look to the moon um, with the darker kind of edges to it and then I also came back in with the marble statue which is that really light grey ink and I did a little bit of ink blending on there too really just to sort of fill in the colour of the moon and again I used that marble statue ink in the background to stamp that cluster of stars a few times and you can see because it's that gorgeous random design 
it doesn't look like I've just stamped the same cluster multiple times. It kind of looks like I did actually individually stamp them all to give that sort of um, cascading design across the card as well, which is really nice. And um, all of the sentiment stamps, they've kind of made them so that they would follow the sort of crescent shape of the moon, which is really nice. Um, and so this one fits really nicely with this sort of outside circle shape of the moon. And then I've just sort of nestled it so that the tree is kind of coming underneath there as well. And then to give a little bit more um, interest and sparkle, I actually took the Quicksilver um, nouveau glacier paste and put a little bit out on my mat and then watered it down and flicked it on to the card as well just to give that sort of extra sparkle but again if you don't like this like if, or if you don't like the way it looks when you try to do the splattering technique with a paintbrush um, you can also use the silver glitter marker which is the silver mist one um, and it works really nicely stamping with that um, little speckly stamp that comes in the stamp set as well uh, which you'll see on my journal page in a second so I did that one then I thought well all of these cards I've done are very sort of blue grey kind of um, colour scheme to sort of go along with like a night sky and stuff to have the moon in it but I thought why not go for really bright colours and use a stamp in a different way so this is just the branch which again could be lightning or some kind of veining um, or a crack as well it could be a crack stamp too um, but I thought it would look really nice with rainbow colours so I just stamped it with eight different of the Nouveau ink pad colours I kept them all out so I could tell you. Um, I used sliced strawberry, carrot stick, rubber duck, lime burst, Laguna Bay, blue siren or siren blue, um, oriental iris and exotic orchid. So that was my little rainbow of colours that I used across there. And all I was doing was I did do it in the stamping platform so that I could stamp things multiple times to make sure they're all kind of more of the same intensity of colour because that green is quite light compared to the yellow that it was next to so being able to stamp it like four times really builds up the colour and gives it the same kind of intensity and um, I started with the yellow then I did orange and red then I cleaned the stamp with the Nouveau stamp cleaner um, and dried it off with a little bit of kitchen roll then I moved on to the green, the turquoise, the dark blue, the purple and the violet and I didn't really need to clean it much in between that as well. Um, so I thought that was a good thing to tell you about how to you know, go with the colours, I thought that'd be good. Um, but yeah, I really like how this one turned out, really quick. I literally, I made this this morning, it was literally like a 10 minute card. And then all I did was I trimmed off like just over a centimetre off the top of my panel and then uh, cut this at about a centimetre there. And then I could just move the top part up. So usually I do cut a piece out of here, but I didn't in this case because I wanted the branches to still cover quite um, a large portion of the card. So um this line where I've cut it here actually matches with this line. I didn't take a piece out, I just moved them apart. Um, but you can take a piece out as well and then it kind of looks more continuous across the gap too. Um, and then all I did was just put a little thin strip of black card underneath both of those sides just to sort of make that little channel uh, stand out. And then I just stamped the happy birthday in there as well. So I think that works really nicely just as a simple card to use just one of these stamps with. And you could have done that with the trees as well. You could do a cool um, version with the trees or with the speckles actually as well. I think the speckle one would look really nice with kind of a rainbow of speckles um, or the stars too. You could actually do the same kind of thing with the stars. You could do like a whole set to give to somebody as a present as well. So that is another card that I did. And then I did a little art journal page as well. So I made myself some of these, um, I think people call them like junk journals. I was having fun doing a ton of jelly printing a little while back. And I thought, um, I'm going to keep like, keep all of my scrap pages that I've done because you know when you're like brayering off to change colour or you've put too much on your plate and you need somewhere to put that excess paint and you kind of bray it on a scrap piece of paper or you completely want to change the colours that you're working with and you want to clean your plate off and stuff so I was keeping all of those papers and then all I did was cut them down to size and put a few staples down the middle and make it into a little art journal so this page that I worked on 
look kind of like this to begin with. That's the other half of the sheet. This is just like cheapy uh, printer paper that I was just brayering off onto. Um, and obviously I'd been using black, but I didn't want the black to um, be too prominent, so I was brayering it off to get some of it off my brayer. It had picked up some stuff from the jelly plate, so I've got like little bits of metallic in there, and there was still some metallic left on here as well. You can see like little bits on here too. Then all I did was just uh, take a stiff bristled paintbrush, add on some greeny turquoise colours of paint, and I thought, oh, that looks a like a really nice background to do um, a kind of sky scene on. So I started with the trees along the bottom. I just stamped it twice and heat embossed with white and got my beautiful tree line there. Um, then I obviously had this die cut left over from those two cards I showed you and I thought well that's going to work absolutely perfectly on here. So I um, covered it with the clear mark ink and heat embossed it with that pearl luster embossing powder and look how beautiful it looks. I think it works really nicely for a moon. And you've got all that beautiful crater detail that that die cut into it as well. And then you can see here, this sentiment also nestles really nicely into the crescent of that moon as well, which is really lovely that they thought about that. Um, you know, when they were designing the sentiments, they just they didn't just arrange it how you know it looked nice just as by itself. They actually thought about how um, like this edge goes nicely with that curve of the small moon but this edge of it goes nicely with that curve of the jaggedy crescent moon as well so I think that looks really nice and then right in the background here all of these little speckles I, I resisted the urge to actually splatter and I just stamped with the glitter marker instead so all you do is you make sure you've got a nice lot of ink in the, the nib of it and then you just have your stamp like this and you hold it sideways um, it does catch a little bit just because they're all sort of like little bits sticking up on this stamp uh, but you could just keep going and then you can either um, breathe on it or just uh, do a really light mist of water over the stamp and then you can stamp on it really nicely and that even stuck onto um, acrylic paint on there as well it's quite a matte paint but it did... Um, stick nicely onto there too and then to finish that off all I did was draw a little um, faux stitching line and drew a few little uh, white stars on but you could have stamped them or used some of the die cuts as well you could easily have die cut some of those stars out of white and put them on there too and then I just finished it with a date stamp as well so I thought I'd show you that one I don't usually show um, art journal kind of layouts in these videos but I thought it would be nice to I think this is a really nice set for art journaling um, just because it's quite like nice large images and you could build a nice scene on here as well. I could have added the mountains in front of here if I wanted to. Um, yeah, I think it's just a really nice set this month for all sorts of different occasions. You can go really bright and funky with it. You can go more like traditional looking or you can do your art journaling as well. So um, I hope you enjoyed this up close video. This was stamp club number four for Tonic and it is the shoot for the moon um, stamp, stamp set and die set as well. So I'll leave all the links below in case you want to grab this set. Um, I'm pretty sure you have to buy both of them together. You can't just buy the stamp set or the die set. Um, but I think they work beautifully together but also you can do some cards with them separately as well which is really nice. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. And I will see you again in the next one. And I hope you had a lovely Christmas as well. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.